Hello, my name is Jacob Gilbert. I'm a PhD student at the University of Maryland, and I'll be presenting Weighted Edit Distance Computation, Strings, Trees, and Dyke on behalf of my co-authors Deborah Adidas, Mohamed Taji Haji Agai, Samash Kaziamaka, and Barna Saha. So first, I'll just define string edit distance. Uh, given two input strings, X and Y, we want to know the minimum number of character insertions, deletions, and substitutions needed to transform X to Y. Uh, so we have an example here. We have an input string X at the top and an input string Y. And what we can do is we can try to find a alignment between them that tells us what the edit distance is, the minimum edit distance can be. So here is an optimal alignment. Um, and what it says is that we're going to end up deleting this B in X we're going to do one substitution to change this B to an A, and then we're going to want to insert an extra B at the end of X. And since we did one deletion, one substitution, and one insertion, we have a total edit distance of three between X and Y. All of the uh, diagonal, or sorry, all of the black lines between X and Y correspond to a perfect match. Since they're the same character, they don't have any cost. So that was an example of unweighted at a distance. And in this paper, we consider the weighted variant denoted with a superscript W. Uh, so given some sort of weight function on the alphabet sigma uh, union with the empty character epsilon, now we can define uh, the weighted at a distance as the minimum cost of transforming x to y using character edits, where the character edits have a cost. Uh, so insertion has a cost of W of epsilon and then B if we're inserting B. Deletion on character A will then have a cost of W of A comma epsilon. And then substituting A for B will cost W of A comma B. And we can think of the rest of the table using this chart. So for the unweighted at a distance, uh, it's the same as the weighted at a distance using the discrete metric written here. So every deletion, insertion, and substitution just costs one. And so we still have an at a distance of three, even in the weighted case. But we're also now allowing for other types of weight functions as well. So now deleting B could cost three and substitutions could cost two now. And so if we again look at the same alignment, it's actually become a lot more costly since it does two, uh, one insertion and one deletion on B and also a substitution as well. So potentially uh, between the unweighted and the weighted at a distance, the optimal alignment can change. So maybe this is a much better alignment now. So we do a lot more deletions and insertions of A since that still just costs one. And we unfortunately still have to do one substitution of cost two, but in total the edit distance has become six in this new weight function. So uh, this problem is a pretty classic problem in the literature. It was first discovered that there's a dynamic programming solution that takes quadratic time. And this result was discovered multiple times in the 60s and 70s. And it actually also works for the weighted edit distance, not just the unweighted edit distance. But if you are working with just the unweighted edit distance, then there is a small improvement that was made in 1980 uh, that runs in time O of n over log n quantity squared. So just a little bit better up to some polylog factors. And it turns out that we're not really going to do better than quadratic time because there's a matching lower bound up to sub polynomial factors conditioned on the strong exponential time hypothesis, specifically the orthogonal vector conjecture. And this also holds for the weighted version of the problem as well. We actually consider not just the weighted edit distance, but specifically the bounded weighted edit distance in our paper. So this is when you are provided some integer k that is going to upper bound the edit distance between x and y. And if you know what k is, then it turns out that there's actually an O of n k time algorithm that we use as a subroutine in our own algorithm. And Landau and Vishkin actually improved this to show that there's actually a runtime of an additive factor in K, so n plus K squared time algorithm, using the same dynamic programming approach, but um, complemented with some extra analysis using suffix trees and monotonicity. Uh, and then it's also sort of folklore uh, knowledge that you can't really get past anything better than n plus K squared up to subpolynomial factors in K conditioned again on Seth and orthogonal vector. So one thing we want to note is that the condition that the weighted edit distance is bounded by k can be meaningless because uh, we could just scale our weight function to be so small that it's guaranteed to be, uh, that it's guaranteed that the edit distance is smaller than k. And so this bound on k doesn't really tell us anything. So what we're going to say is that all of our weight functions are normalized, which means that the, any edit is going to cost at least one. And so now, again, if we look at those bounded edit distance algorithms, uh, the O of nk time algorithm still works in the weighted variant, but the Landau-Vishkin algorithm only works for unweighted. 
at a distance. And the folklore lower bound still holds as well. So now in this work, our, our first result is going to be that there is a bounded weighted string at a distance algorithm that runs in time O of n plus k to the 5. And it is actually the first algorithm that runs in n, or the first weighted at a distance algorithm for strings that runs in n plus poly k. So an important tool that I'm just going to mention before I start talking about how our algorithm works is called an alignment graph. So if we build an alignment graph on our running example here, so we have our input string x on the top on the x-axis and our input string y on the y-axis, we're going to make a vertex for every pair of characters. And then we're going to add a horizontal line representing a deletion of A. And we're going to add, or it's not, not necessarily A, but we're going to, every horizontal line is going to correspond to a deletion of the character above. And then every vertical line is going to correspond to an insertion of the character of Y. And then every diagonal line is going to correspond to either a match if the two characters, the one in X and one in Y are the same, or a substitution if they're different. And so we can add these edges in with the weights according to the weight function from before. So again, deleting and inserting a Y, I'm mean, sorry, inserting a B is going to cost three. A perfect match is just cost zero. Deleting and inserting A is cost one. And then normal substitutions, A to B or B to A is going to cost two. And so what we want to do in an alignment graph, the corresponding equivalent problem of computing edit distance is just finding a minimum cost path from the top left vertex to the bottom right vertex. So again, using our running example, if we want to look at this alignment where we make a couple edits on A's and one substitution, we can actually translate this exactly on the alignment graph. First, we match the B, we insert an A, we do a bunch more matches, we do our one substitution, and then we do a couple more things following the alignment from there. And so every path in the alignment graph corresponds to an alignment, and the minimum cost path in the alignment graph corresponds to the optimal alignment between the input strings. And actually, the simple improvement uh, that we can make if we know k, which bounds our edit distance, is we only have to commute, uh, compute k diagonals. Since every horizontal edge and every vertical edge adds one to our edit distance, if after the k diagonal, we know that anything further, anything to the right, or anything below uh, is going to require k plus one edits, and it's going to be larger than our bound on our edit distance. So for this example, we know that the edit distance between x and y with our weight function is six. We don't have to compute anything past the sixth diagonal. And so this is why there is a simple O of nk time algorithm using the dynamic programming solution. And so uh, in our own algorithm, we're going to be looking at the how the alignment graph works in the weighted setting. So now let's talk about this O of n plus k to the 5 time algorithm for bounded weighted string at a distance. So again, uh, this on the right is going to be sort of an abstracted alignment graph. So the x-axis is still input string x. And the y-axis is still input string y. We don't know what they are anymore. They're general. And then this blue line is going to correspond to an alignment or a path through the alignment graph. So since we normalized our weight function, the edit distance, uh, the unweighted edit distance between x and y is going to be bounded above by the weighted edit distance because the weights of all the edits in the weighted variant are at least one since the weight function is normalized. And so our first step is actually going to be building an optimal unweighted alignment between x and y. And we're going to let this blue line represent this optimal unweighted alignment between x and y for now. And so what does this optimal unweighted alignment that we get tell us? Well, it's going to allow us to decompose x and y into uh, O of k characters and the fragments between and around them. So uh, synchronized fragments are going to be defined as given two substrings, in x, uh, one in x and one in y. They're k synchronized if they are within, uh, if their starting indices are within k of each other. And the substrings are exactly the same. And so we could divide this unweighted alignment into uh, perfectly matched synchronized fragments, these blue parts, and then edits. So maybe a substitution, uh, the vertical lines represent insertions, and the horizontal lines represent deletions. So all the red are edits that are made by the uh, optimal unweighted alignment, and all the blue sections are synchronized fragments that are perfectly matched. And again, because we know that the edit distance is bounded by k, we can argue that there are at most k of these red sections, and then at most k plus 1 of these blue sections. Now we want to take this unweighted alignment that we have, 
and we want to sort of build or see how it interacts with an optimal weighted alignment. And we'll get, we're going to zoom in to just a single synchronized fragment that we got from our optimal unweighted alignment and see how it uh, interacts with the weighted alignment. So let this green line represent a optimal weighted alignment between x and y. Well, the first thing we're going to say is that this specific weighted alignment is impossible to even have. So um, the reason is because this optimal weighted alignment comes to the synchronized fragment, follows it for a bit, leaves, but then comes back and crosses it again. And we're going to say that it leaving and coming back cannot happen. And the reason is because as long as an optimal weighted alignment follows the synchronized fragment exactly, then it will never have any additional cost because the synchronized fragment is just the same substring in X and Y, so it's a perfect matching as long as the optimal weighted alignment follows the synchronized fragment. So if it were to leave and come back, it'd be unoptimal since it could have just followed the synchronized fragment the whole time for no additional cost. So in fact, the optimal synchronized fragment should look, I'm sorry, the optimal weighted alignment should look a little bit more like this. It can touch the corresponding synchronized fragment at most once. But that does leave room for never touching the synchronized fragment. This is possible completely that the synchronized, I'm sorry, the optimal weighted alignment never actually even overlaps the synchronized fragment. This is also fine. So what can we say in this case? Well, uh, let's look a little bit at this large perfect match section. So the optimal weighted alignment uh, does not require any edits in this large green area here. And so this, this, this uh, substring in Y is going to perfectly match this first green substring in X. And if we also look at the synchronized fragment, we can look at the same substring in Y and see where it projects onto an X, and we can see that the second green bar, this green substring in X, must be the same as the first green substring in X, which means that the synchronized fragment has some periodicity going on. So these green sections must be contained in one large periodic substring in this synchronized fragment. And so what we can say is that every synchronized fragment of X and Y uh, that never touches an optimal weighted alignment must consist of at most 3k pieces with periods less than or equal to 4k. And that is because if the optimal weighted alignment does not follow the synchronized fragment, then it must use at least one edit to transition between each periodic piece with a unique period. So we're going to say that pieces of this fragment in X and Y are un uh, have unique periods. And so the optimal weighted alignment requires at least one edit to transition between each piece if it does not ever follow the synchronized fragment itself. And so this is really useful. Now we can actually make this lemma here that says that an optimal weighted alignment matches synchronized fragments except for a prefix and suffix of 3k pieces with periods uh, at most 4k. And so let's say that uh, this prefix and the synchronized fragment is composed of 3k pieces and the suffix is composed of 3k pieces. Well, it must be the case that somewhere the optimal weighted alignment starts agreeing with the synchronized fragment. And since we said that it touches the synchronized fragment at most once, well, it has to overlap the synchronized fragment for the whole time. And so now we can sort of guarantee that these characters in the middle of the synchronized fragment must be matched by any optimal weighted alignment. If, it has, if the synchronized fragment has a long prefix, with many pieces and a long suffix with many pieces, then it's guaranteed that any optimal weighted alignment will match the characters in the shaded region uh, at no cost. And so if we just formally define our bounded weighted edit distance uh, as sort of exactly the weighted edit distance, if the weighted edit distance is at most k and infinity otherwise, what we can say is if we remove this, this shaded region from x and y completely, then the bounded weighted edit distance will not change at all. And of course, it's important we know k, the reason we're working with bounded weighted edit distance, because otherwise we wouldn't really have uh, any ability to bound the number of pieces that we're looking for in our prefix and suffix. That's sort of where the k comes in, as well as for the period length. And so now, if we remove all of these shaded regions, we can assume that uh, x and y is decomposed into k squared characters and synchronized fragments with small periods. And the reason is because um, we originally had k synchronized fragments from the unweighted alignment, and we've removed all the middle sections. And so what's left is prefixes and suffixes of k pieces. 
And so we have k pieces per synchronized fragment, and there's k synchronized fragments, so that's going to be k squared total. So what are we left with? We're left with uh, synchronized occurrences. We'll, we'll call them synchronized occurrences. They're basically just synchronized fragments of periodic substrings in x and y. And so what we want to look at is how does an optimal weight alignment interact with these periodic sections? Um, and so these periodic substrings are going to be denoted as q to the e. So q is our period string, and e is the number of times it's, it's repeated. e is going to be called the exponent. Uh, and we also assume that uh, we're working with Q as the primitive period of this periodic substring. The period means that there is no smaller period. So if let's say Q has a length of five, then uh, this synchronized fragment does not have a period of length four, three, two, or one. There cannot be anything smaller. Q is the period primitive period of this synchronized fragment. And so now there's a lot of blue diagonals that we could follow in an optimal weighted alignment that all have cost zero since uh, we could really start at any uh, period of x and start matching at any period of y in this synchronized fragment. But let's say, uh, in the worst case, that the optimal weight alignment doesn't follow these zero cost uh, matchings of periods at all. It's somewhere in between these diagonals. Well, we're going to argue that this actually, again, can't really happen. And the reason is because um, if we do the same trick we did earlier, we take a look at one of these long, perfectly matched sections of green in our optimal weighted alignment. We take one substring in Y and we project it onto X using our optimal weighted alignment as well as one of the neighboring diagonals. We'll notice that there should be some periodicity going on. Of course, we already know that Q is a period, but because the optimal weighted alignment does not agree with any of these diagonals, it would mean that there's actually an even smaller period than Q. But that contradicts our assumption that we're working with Q as the primitive period of the synchronized occurrence. This is actually not even possible. What that means is that after Q consecutive characters, uh, if there are any more matched characters according to our optimal weighted alignment, they must be matched canonically or according to one of these diagonals. So this optimal weighted matching must eventually agree with one of these diagonals if it's going to match more than Q consecutive characters. So let's say uh, what it looks like instead is uh, it just has a couple more red sections so that there are never more than Q consecutive characters matched. Well, how many times can we do this? Well, if E is really long, if really large, the number of repetitions of our periods is more than K or 4K in this case, it's going to cost one edit per repetition, and that's going to be way more than K. So it's going to quickly blow up. That means eventually, after K um, edits, the optimal weight alignment has to agree with the synchronized fragment. At some point, it must overlap a synchronized, uh, sorry, one of these blue diagonals. We don't really ne necessarily need to even know which one because all of them are corresponding to repetitions of Q. So they all kind of look the same in our strings X and Y. But at some point, it must overlap if the number of repetitions is more than 4K. Oops. And so what we can say is we can sort of do the same thing we did earlier. We can take one middle section of these repetitions and just completely remove it. Uh, like I said, we don't really even need to know which section specifically, because all these repetitions of the Q are the same. And instead, we can just reduce the exponent of 4K to ex of greater than 4K to exactly 4K without changing the bounded weighted edit distance at all. And so now, not only have we removed the middles of synchronized fragments that had many pieces, we've also uh, re reduced the exponent of any of the remaining periodic pieces to be small. And so with these two steps, with these two reductions, we sort of get a universal kernel of our original input strings that are a lot smaller that we can solve the problem on instead. Specifically, uh, we give sort of a main result in our paper. There is an O of n time algorithm that given our input strings x and y and our bound on our edit distance k, can construct strings x prime and y prime of length O of k to the 4, such that the bounded weighted edit distance of x prime and y prime is exactly the same as the bounded weighted edit distance of x and y. And this holds for every normalized wave function w. And so just to summarize again, what we did is the first step, we uh, constructed an optimal unweighted alignment to decompose x and y into sort of k characters that are edited and then k synchronized fragments. And then for each pair of synchronized fragments, if it had a really long prefix of at least 3k pieces with small period, and if it had a long suffix of at least 3k pieces with small period, then we could just remove all of the middle characters from x and y without affecting the bounded weighted edit distance, 
And then for all the remaining pieces, if they're periodic with a large exponent, we can just reduce the exponent to 4k. And we, we're left with this kernel of size k to the 4. And then we can just run our O of mk time dynamic programming algorithm on that. And is now k to the 4. So this just gives us a k to the 5 time solution. And it took O of n time to construct the kernel. So in total, this is O of n plus k to the 5 time. And that is our bounded weighted string edit distance algorithm in O of n plus k to the 5. Now, the paper also uh, is equally divided into tree edit distance and dike edit distance alongside string edit distance. So I'll just talk a little bit about the results for that as well. Um, tree edit distance is the problem of transforming labeled, ordered, and rooted forests into each other uh, using the same edit operation. So maybe we want to know how to transform this first forest into the second forest optimally. Well, we're still allowed to substitute the labels of nodes now we can also insert nodes. So we can insert this white root here and add the children, the hanging white and black nodes. And we can also delete nodes as before, as in string edits. And what we can say is that there's actually a linear time universal kernel of size O of k to the 5 for tree edit distance. And because tree edit distance can be solved cube in cubic time normally in O of n cube time, using this kernel, we can get an O of n plus k to the 15 time algorithm. There is one catch. Oh, sorry, before I even talk about that. Uh, this general technique where we sort of try to align synchronized fragments and remove the middles and find a universal kernel also improves the state of the art for the unweighted tree edit distance as well. So previously, the best unweighted tree edit distance uh, ran in time O of n plus k to the 15. And uh, we're able to show an unweighted tree edit distance algorithm with time O of n plus k to the 7 log k time. That's a nice consequence of this new approach to the problem as well. Uh, one restriction is that the weight function must also satisfy the triangle inequality on top of being normalized. Now, dike edit distance is the other problem that we considered, and this is just given an input string of parentheses. We want to know the number of edits needed to make this input string well balanced. So, for example, there's some unmatched brackets here in our input string, as well as an unmatched opening parenthesis and an unmatched bracket here as well, right before it. And what we can do is we could delete these brackets and we could substitute this open parenthesis for a closing bracket. And now we have a well, parenthes well parenthesized sequence and we are done. And it took three edits. Um, so we can show that actually using the same uh, similar approach uh, for decade distance, there is a universal kernel that we can get in linear time of size O of k to the 4. And again, uh, decade distance like triad distance allows for cubic time solutions so we can use this kernel to get an O of n plus k to the 12 time algorithm. And not only must the weight function satisfy the triangle equality, but now it must be skew symmetric. So um, if we let a be an opening parenthesis and a bar be a closing parenthesis, and same for b, the weight of a substitution substituting to b is the same as the weight of uh, b bar substituting to a bar. And sort of a natural restriction on uh, the wave function for dike edit distance. OK, so one thing to note is that periodicity is different for dike and tree edit distance. And this is sort of a challenge that we have to identify. For dike edit distance, we sort of need pairs of parentheses now, not uh, in the same string instead of two different strings that are the exact same, except for one is the complement of the other. And in tree periodicity, we identify horizontal periodicity, where there are subtrees that are repeated. And we also identify vertical periodicity, where we have paths through a single tree with repeated branches and labels. Additionally, uh, using the state-of-the-art unweighted tree edit alignment is a bit too costly. So recall our first step of our string edit distance algorithm is to define an unweighted alignment. Well, uh, unweighted tree alignment would take time n plus k to the 15, which is a little bit too much. So instead, we show that in linear time, we can construct forests f prime and g prime from our input bars f and g with half the size with an additional o of k to the 5 factor without changing the bounded weighted tree at a distance. And if we repeat this algorithm um, over and over again, eventually we'll just be left with our kernel of size o of k to the 5. In conclusion, we were able to show o of n plus k5 string at a distance algorithm for the weighted variant. Can the exponent be improved? It actually turns out not only can it be improved, an optimal algorithm has time n plus root and k to the 3. So some opening open problems are, uh, what's the complexity for smaller values of k? What about for constant size alphabets? 
And are there any classes of weight functions that allow for better balance? Thank you for your time.